What do we see with uh, diet? We've scraped up upon it a little bit, but uh, what about something like a ketogenic diet and uh, its effects on uh, Alzheimer's, dementia, damage of the brain? Do we see any extra benefit with something mm. like that, or is it kind of more just a calorie control thing? So, such a controversial field. For yeah. some reason, like <clears throat> nutrition, people just start attacking you yeah. on Instagram. I'm not Careful sure why. what you say here. Now, <laughs> the most widely studied diet for brain health in terms of Alzheimer's disease and mild cognitive impairment is the mind diet. Um, so that is the Mediterranean, mm -hmm. like a, a, it's like the Mediterranean diet. So it involves all the food groups. Mainly the bulk of it is green leafy vegetables, vegetables, um, all different types of vegetables, fish, olive oil, and a little bit of red meat. And what they found was if you just adjusted for nutrition when it comes to Alzheimer's disease, you can lower your risk by 53% just from adjusting one, one area, which is nutrition. Now, I don't subscribe to any diet. I eat everything. Mm. I, uh, I eat red meat. I love it. I don't think that there is a problem to it. The only time that that becomes a problem is when your saturated fat is tipping over to the point of where your LDL is uh, higher than 70 so if you get an LDL higher than 70, then you're quote unquote in that atherosclerotic state. And we know that that's bad because what does that end up doing? It ends up forming these uh, plaques against the arteries of the wall, mm -hmm. which stops the, the blood flow narrowing. And so we don't, we don't want that. So I was talking about this with Max Lugavere and he's like, but Louisa, it's good for you. And I'm like, just the dose makes the poison. Yeah. So you can have, you know, in my opinion, saturated fat, is only a problem if you're exceeding the recommended daily intake, which don't ask me what that what that is because it's different for everybody. Mm -hmm. So we really need to be monitoring that. We know that green leafy vegetables are fantastic for the for the brain. Nuts, olive oil is great. Fish, oh my gosh, fish is wonderful. If you, you know, people think of fish as you know EPA, DHA, omega three fatty acids, and mm -hmm. they're absolutely amazing. I always say that if you should have any two supplements, you should be having creatine and omega-3 fatty acids, in my opinion, your athletics yeah. gold standard. But if you put a telescope and shine it on a, a salmon, you know, you look at it, it's not just EPA, DHA, you've also got B vitamins in there. Mm -hmm. B vitamins, B12, B6, these are amazing for the brain and for mild cognitive impairment patients. So just stay away from the bad things, really. Pat Project family, we talk about meat all the time on the podcast because protein is essential for your health. That's why I'm partnered with Piedmontese. And if you head to their website, they have such, so much different types of beef. They have beef sticks, beef jerky, tons of different cuts of meat. You should go check them out. Andrew, how can they learn more? You guys got to head over to Piedmontese.com. That's P-I-E-D-M-O-N-T-E-S-E.com. And at checkout, enter promo code POWER to save 25% off your entire order. And if your order is over $150 or more, you get free two-day shipping. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. Currently, the healthcare system, when it comes to Alzheimer's disease, yeah. Alzheimer's disease is costing the healthcare system $305 billion in direct costs. Which is weird because they can't do anything about it. There's no... Well, yeah. Right? You can't. No, actually. So currently um, there's 30 genes, around 30 genes involved in Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> out of all of the patients who have been, out of all the people who have Alzheimer's disease, guess how many is uh, diagnosed from a genetic form? Mm. 3%. Three percent up to three percent of diagnosis from genetics alone that means that around 95 percent 97 percent of all alzheimer's disease patients are driven through lifestyle factors now hear me strong on this i believe by right now 50 million people worldwide have alzheimer's disease that number is said to triple by the year 2050 yeah. it's costing the healthcare system 305 billion dollars it is the fastest progress, progress, progressing epidemic in developed nations, mm. and it will be the collapse of our healthcare system. Specifically, well, I mean, I'm, I'm curious, Alzheimer's, yeah, mm. but we also see the rate of obesity going up and like that too. So do you think it's, it's a cumulative of these different things happening or? Well, lo like I said to you, 95% mm -hmm. of current Alzheimer's disease 
uh, patients are genetically getting uh, are not gene- uh, the non genetic form. Yeah. So, for example, you can have the one of the high risk genes is ApoE4. Mm-hmm. Okay. You can get two copies of it. So, if you have one copy, it increases your risk four times. If you have two copies, it increases your risk twelve times. Mm. Now, here's the interesting thing: out of all the people who have got the two form, who have got two copies of E4 and E4, only fifty percent get Alzheimer's disease. There are parts of Africa where they've got E4 and E4 and they never develop the condition. They never get Alzheimer's disease. Why? Because of lifestyle interventions such as eating, eating well, exercising, just moving to America increases your risk of Alzheimer's disease by, I think, 6%. Hey, guys, if you like this clip, go ahead and comment down below and let us know what you liked about it. All right. Share this with a friend. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. And also, we are on Reddit and Discord. All that's down below. All our sponsors and everyone that supports us, down below there too, so you can get whatever you like from us. All right? Peace.